Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a LibraWave sample library on a GNU Linux operating system. So the operating system I'm using here is Linux Mint 17. So start off by logging into the LibraWave website by clicking my account and uh, putting in your login details. Then you can either go to the orders page or the downloads page and download the files for the product you'd like to install. The orders page is usually a bit easier because it categorizes each set of downloads for each order. So I'm just click on an order number and have a look at the downloads just for that order. So here we can see which product the downloads are for, how many downloads you've got remaining, and over here we have the actual download links. So I'm on GNU Linux, so I'm going to download the GNU plus Linux installer. And I'll just save that. So depending on which sample library, you'll have a different number of samples. So for Casbeck, which is the uh, instrument we're looking at here, there's just one samples file and it's 96 megabytes, so we'll download that. And while that's downloading, if we go back to the orders that I've got here, we can see for Sophia Woodwinds, for example, the samples come in many parts. So we've got nine parts here. So you'd have to download all of them. So make sure you download all of the samples and the correct installer for the product. Okay, once that's done, I've gone to my downloads folder and you can see I've got the installer file, casbeck 1.0.1.sh and the samples file. If the samples are split over several files and this number at the end will be different, so you'd have .hr1, .hr2, .hr3, etc. for each part, but they'll all have that .hr and then a number as the extension. Now these .hr files are actually an archive, like a zip file. Uh, they're not actually the samples, so we have to install those as well, but that's going to be the second part. So let's start by running the software installer. So that's the .sh file. Now we've just got to make sure we have permission to run it. So I've gone to the properties, going to permissions, and making sure this execute checkbox is enabled. The next thing to do is open a terminal window. I'm just pressing Control alt t for that. I'm going to change directory to the downloads folder. And now I'm going to run this installer and I can just drag it onto the terminal window and hit enter. So let's make this full screen. So now we're presented with the license and if you press enter, you can scroll through it one line at a time. If you press space bar, you can go through a page at a time. So we'll just go all the way to the end. And now it asks, do we accept the license? I'm going to assume that we do. And I'm going to type Y and press enter. Now the installer asks if I'd like to install the plugin. So I'm going to type Y again and press enter. And now I have to give it the location to install the plugin file. So I'm going to install it to my VST folder, which is actually a hidden folder, VST. So let's paste that in and I'm going to hit enter. And now it tells me the software installation is complete. Please launch the plugin or standalone version and click install samples when prompted to install the instrument samples. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'll close the terminal window now and I've got to launch the plugin. We can see it's been added to the VST folder here. So I'm going to open Reaper. And Reaper is set up to automatically search my VST folder, so it will have found the instrument already. So I'm going to right click and insert the instrument on a track. And this is what we're presented with. So it's asking us to install the samples or choose a sample folder. Now, if this is the first time you've installed the library and you've downloaded the .hr sample files, you need to click install samples. If you've previously installed the samples and this is a new version you're upgrading to, then you can select choose sample folder. So I'm going to choose install samples. And now it asks us to select the .hr1 file. If you're installing a library that comes with multiple sample files, you still just select the one that ends in .hr1. So I hit OK and it asks where I'd like to install the samples. So for now, I'm just going to put them on my desktop and I'll create a new folder and I'll call it Casbeck Samples. 
So I hit OK. We get a prompt. We can choose a few things like selecting the bit depth, 16 bit or 24 bit. If we're installing an upgrade, we can choose to overwrite files, but you best just leave that at the default of overwrite if newer. The option to delete the sample archive after extraction is by default set to no. If you set this to yes, it will delete the HR1 file after the samples have been installed. I'm going to leave it set to no. And now I'm going to hit OK and it's going to extract the samples to the location I selected on the desktop. So it says the samples are imported correctly. Now if I was to play the instrument at this stage, I'll just click on some keys, these, there won't be any sound and that's because once you've installed the sample you have to first close the instrument and reopen it. So I'll remove this track and I'll reinsert it. And now the samples are loaded correctly and you'll see down here on the meters the, um, the audio is playing. We can't hear it but that's just because of my recording settings but you can see it's um, down here on Reaper's meters that is audio coming out. Now if something went wrong in the installation process or you selected to choose a sample folder location instead of install the samples, you can delete all the config files from the install and just run the instrument again and you'll be prompted again to install the samples. So now I'll show you where the config files are. So this is on GNU Linux. It's different on other operating systems, but we go to the home folder. We go to the .config folder. So this is a hidden folder. And then we look for LibreWave. And inside this folder, you will have a configuration file for each LibreWave product you've installed. So this is the one for Casbec. So if I delete that, and we'll open Reaper again and add the instrument again. And once again, we get this prompt. So it resets it. So if anything goes wrong, just delete those configuration files and you'll get back to this stage and you can start over. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and I'll see you next time.